Hello, and welcome back to Teacher Gimbal's channel. Today we'll be going over illustrative math, geometry, unit one, lesson 11 practice. If you like this video, please make sure to like and subscribe if you can, so you can see more like this. I also make videos on Algebra 1 and Algebra 2 that you can find on my page. I believe the subscribe button is right over here. All right, let's get started. Problem number one. Which of these constructions would construct a line of reflection that takes point A to point B? So we've got point A, he's chilling over here. We have point B, he's over here. And we know that A was reflected over some line, we're not quite sure where he is yet, to get to point B. And how can we construct what this line is? Well, the definition of a reflection is each point that we reflect, we reflect it over the perpendicular bisector. So let's read our answers and see which one makes the most sect. sense. Construct the perpendicular bisector of segment AB. And that's actually our line of reflection. Uh, we're done. But let's check the other ones just to make sure. If we constructed a line B perpendicular to the segment AB, so we construct a line through B, so that would be constructing a line through B, that does not give us the line of reflection. What if we constructed the line passing through AB? Well, that's this line over here, and I guess it's through AB, so it keeps going in either direction. That does not create the line of reflection. Construct a line parallel to line AB. Well, that would be a line going this way. Also would not give us the line of reflection. So to find the line of reflection, what we want to do is create a segment between the two points, find the perpendicular bisector, and that's going to be our line of reflection. All right, question number two. A point stays in the same location when reflected over a line. What can you conclude about P? Well, if P was over here, he would be reflected across this line to P prime. But we know P does not move. If P does not move, that means when he's reflected, he's living on the line of reflection. So if P is here, flipping over the line of reflection puts P prime, P prime in exactly the same spot. So what we can conclude is that P lives on the line of reflection. Problem number three. Lines L and M are per perpendicular with a line of intersection P. So we got P, we got line M, we got line L. Noah says that 180 degree rotation with center P has the same effects on the points in the plane reflecting over line M. Do you agree with Noah? Explain your reasoning. So say we got a point P over there. Well, actually we're not gonna call him P. We're gonna call him A. If we reflected him over line M, he would go right about over here. Now, a 180 degree rotation, I recall back from my earlier times, 180 degrees, oops, it's like that. So to rotate 180 degrees, I would have to rotate all the way down there. So A prime for that rotation would be, that's my rotate A prime, this is my reflect A prime, would end up over there. So no, it would not have the same effect. When I reflect, he's going to flip into the quadrant to the right of it. And when I rotate 180 degrees, he's always going to go down to the quadrant diagonal to where I started. So no, it does not do the same thing. Let's go on to problem number four. There are four triangles that have been transformed by a different transformation. Which transformation is not a rigid transformation? Now, if you remember from the last lesson, there are two ways we'll define a rigid transformation. Way number one, rigid transformations preserve, that means keep the same, two things. They keep the measure of the angles the same. They also keep the length of the side the same. So that's one way to talk about a rigid transformation. However, the easier way to think about this is that there are three types of rigid transformations and they are only three types, none other. It is rotation, reflections, and translations. So let's figure this out. This over here looks like a translation. So he is a rigid transformation. This guy is a reflection. Hey, if I create the segment between the points and make the perpendicular bisector, that, that would be my line of reflection, but also rigid motion. This guy, he gets smaller. The lines and the angles don't say the same. It is not rigid motion. It is not a rigid transformation. It is not a reflection, rotation, or translation. So that would be our correct answer. But let's always check out our last dude. This guy looks like he is a rotation, and rotation is one of our correct types of rigid motion. So that would also not be the answer. All right, let's go on to the next question. 
problem number five. Let's zoom in. There is a sequence of rigid motion transformations that takes A to A prime, B to B prime, and C to C prime. The same sequence takes D to D prime. So A went to A prime, C went to C prime, B went to B prime. Well, D is in between A and C. So I know D is also, D prime is also going to be between A prime and C prime. And I see D is closer to C. So D prime is going to live closer to C prime. And that's where D prime is going to live. All right, next question. Problem number six. There are three points on the plane. How, explain how to determine whether point C is closer to point A or point B. Well, if you remember, we've done a question like this very similarly in a previous lesson. I'm going to connect A and B. I am then going to draw myself using a construction, which I did not do, a perpendicular bisector. I know each point on this perpendicular bisector would be equidistant from A and B. If I'm to the right of the perpendicular bisector, I'm closer to B. And if I'm to the left, in this case, I'm closer to A. So because C is to the right of my perpendicular bisector, he is closer to point B. And that's how I can determine it. Problem seven. Diego says a quadrilateral with four congruent sides is always a regular pi polygon. My or May, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, says it is never one. Do you agree with either of them? So when I have questions like this, I always see, can I think of something that doesn't fit into the category? So Diego says a quadrilateral with four congruent sides is a regular polygon. A regular polygon has congruent sides and congruent angles. I can draw a guy, this rhombus. He has four congruent sides, which is what Diego says, but he is not regular because the angles are clearly not congruent. So Diego is wrong. Mai says it never is one. Well, this is a square. He also has four congruent sides according to Diego, and he is a regular polygon. So never, it sometimes could be, if four congruent sides could be a regular polygon. It just isn't necessarily always a regular polygon. So when you use words like always or never, you have to be very careful to make sure that you've thought of all of the exceptions to this rule. So I don't agree with either of them. If you have any questions, please let me know, put them in the comment below, and I'm looking forward to seeing you in my next video.